Esther chapter 6. On that night could not could not the king sleep. And something just came to mind. Wasn't it funny? It was all the hammering of uh, 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 Haman. I just thought of that. As the last night's message, I always said, when I taught Sunday school, I didn't get a chance to teach the whole book, but it would have been funny if he couldn't sleep because of hammering. I keep hearing stuff in my ears or something. What's going on? But he couldn't sleep. Now, you can't find God, G-O-D, in Esther, but you're going to find God. There are times when you cannot sleep. It's not because, you know, you just can't. Maybe God's speaking to you. I've had many nights where I couldn't sleep, and God was speaking. And God wanted you to pray. God wanted you to repent. God wanted to teach you something. I got my phone set so if the Lord speaks to me with a message, I can record it. So I don't How many messages I lost because I went back to sleep and didn't record it. And he commanded, and he commanded to bring the books, of the, the book of the records of the chronicles. Well, now put me to sleep. Now he could have done how many thousand things he could have done. He could call for a plant that would put him to sleep, or a pill that would put him to sleep. He could have called for wine. He could have just gone for a walk like David. He could have done a thousand things. Well, he wants to read a book. All right, romance, crime, drama. He wants to read the book of the Chronicles. This is God. I don't know what ruler would can't sleep in the middle of the, oh, yeah, Go downtown and get me that. Just give me a roll. <laughs> no, this is God. And they were read before the king. So he didn't read it. They, it was read before him. And you're going to realize as we get into this chapter, he's not in bed. And it's been the whole entire night. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthagnan and Tirish, the two king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to who sought to lay hand on the king as of hers. Now that was in back in chapter four, verse sixteen. Now, I told you when we went through back chapter 4, verse 16, that it said in verse 23, the inquisition was made of the matter and was found out. Therefore, they were both hanging on a tree and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. And I told you those Chronicles were going to come back when the king couldn't sleep. Now, how many Chronicles were there? We don't know. How many things have been recorded? I don't know. But up to chapter 6 already, we've seen that there was a plot against the king. We saw that there was a there was the queen who had upset the king. The, the queen who had to cause law to be put on the books. That man had to rule the, his own household. It has been put in the books that all the Jews are now going to be killed. And you know there's probably hundreds if not thousands of other things that are written in these chronicles. And how many books we don't know. But I have been inside of a city hall where they keep records, and you stand in the middle of the wall, you still stand in the middle of the, of the room, and look around. There's bookshelves and file cabinets and everything. You can't just walk into a hall of records like that, grab a book, open it up, and there is what you're looking for. But it says in Proverbs that a, that a lot cast in, and the Lord knows the dis dispensation thereof. I'm not quoting the verse right. God had these men go and grab this particular book. God had these men open up the book to a particular place. And God had them read what we just read. In verse 2. Now I'm not I'm saying it's wrong. I've never I've done it and I I've gotten not weird results. I don't want to say flu. Uh, there are people who honestly pray and open up their Bible and put their finger down and God's answer them. I'm not going to say that's wrong. It's not right for me. I should say not right for me. It's never worked for me, I should say. God does not answer me by that. So I can't speak on those matters. But I've heard testimonies. 
And where you open up the Bible and put your finger, I can see. I think, see, I don't have faith in it because when I do that, okay, I'm open up my Bible. Open up my, well, do I go to the left hand or do I go to the right hand? Do I go to the left of the page or do I go to the right of the page? See, I don't have the faith to do that. As soon as I open my Bible, okay, I got two pages in front of me. What am I going to do? So see, that's why it don't work for me. And there's been times in my life I've been tempted to take a dice. And say, Lord, odd or even, and then, oh, wait a minute. And I've been afraid of the answer. There's nothing there. I'm not saying none of that's wrong. I mean, God is able to use it. You got to have faith in the answer. And you can't, James says, you can't ask, and then the Lord give you the answer. Then, oh, wait a minute. So, of all the books, maybe rooms, this one book is called, and the pages open up, and God has it open in the place. You know what God's going to do one day? He's going to open up the books, and he's going to read them. I take that back. It says it was read to him. The angels are going to read the books. Revelation chapter 20. And what has been done to this man? Oh, he's been in hell. Is he worthy? No, he's not worthy, Lord. And he goes in the lake of fire. You get the kings that dealt with Abraham and Isaac there. Are they worthy? They might be. I don't know. If they are, they can go into the new heavens. And the king said, What honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? Now this is an important verse that you need to nail. And if you don't like what I'm going to say, that's tough wookie. Because I don't care. Mordecai did not stand up and say, Hey, hey, what about me? Back there in chapter 4. Mordecai let it pass. It was sealed in the books. He didn't do it for applause. He didn't do it for money. He didn't do it for fame. Had he done it for fame, had he done it for applause, you would not read chapter 6. Because he would already gotten his reward. And Jesus said, those that do their alms and prayers and on the street corners, blowing a trumpet and, hey, look at me, get ready for me. You, you've got your reward. Don't look for one eternity. And even I, sometimes I puzzle, like a couple weeks ago when we went downtown, we paid money to a parking garage. That's in the name of the Lord. But when we were only there for an hour because of whatever hurricane came through, we lost $4. I'm sitting there that night or the next day like, Lauren, four dollars. We lost four. Wait a minute, that's your money. And I had to start praying. Well, Lord, did I was that grudgingly? Or did I just complain the fact that, we, that Lord you gave us the rain and you made us come home and we lost money? Well, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with that honor. Don't seek honor. Don't do it to impress anybody. Better be not known than, than to be known and, and get and then get to heaven and find out it's not known. I'll say that again. It's better to be not known than to be known here on, on, the, on this planet and get to heaven and find out you're not known. What I mean is you do it all for the glory of man, God's not going to recognize it. You want God to recognize it. God is going to recognize it. How many people are in the land? And this one man, Mordecai, is going to be lifted up. You mean no one ever did anything for the king? No one ever pleased the king? I don't think so. So, what has done Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. Can leave it just like that. Nothing? Okay, that's fine. I'll get a little sleepy now. Good night. That's not how the story goes. It's not, that's not, there's more to the, there's more to the verse. That's what could have happened. And then Mordecai would have woke up in the morning and by night he would have been hanging. 
This is the providence of God that these books have been opened. And when God opens up his books, the king being a type of God now, now we saw some places where he wasn't, but we can't stress a type all the way. But here's a king that opens up the books, and here's a name, here's his actions, and there's got to be a reaction. You will get your just desserts. For too many people, just desserts will be hell. Mordecai, who is a type of the Jew in the, in the tribulation, as a, as a nation in whole, he's going to be lifted up. The Jews will be lifted up. The Jews are God's people. So, and the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house. Sort of the same place where Esther was in the last chapter. I don't want to be here in case he don't call me, but I want to be seen. So if he sees me, there's always a loophole to the law. The law was, I mean, if the king didn't hold up his scepter to you, you died. But there was a way that, you know, we could make ourselves seen but not seen. Esther did it. Haman's going to do it. That were court to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he prepared for him. Oh, look at that. He's coming to the king specifically to say, I want that more I want that Jew specifically, Mordecai. I want him to hang on the on the gallows that I built tonight. You see that? He built those gallows in that night. So Haman and the king did not get any sleep that night. Mordecai got a good night's sleep. Listen, I've been in things with, with people, you know, I finally say, you know what? Why am I worried about it? They're sleeping right now. I'm not. So I'm the loser. So he's come in to speak specifically about Mordecai for the interest of, I want him dead. You say that never happens. What happened in Job 1 and what happened in Job 2? Did not Satan go up before God and just literally come out and say, I want that guy dead? What's Job picture? 42 chapters. Gee, how long is that? What's at the end of the 42nd chapter? And the return to captivity of Job? Job and Mordecai are a type of Jew in the tribulation. What does Satan want? He wants them dead. He wants a mark around the neck. Here, hanging. <coughs> tribulation period, you lose it. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. So the king didn't see him. The people saw him. And the king said, Let him come in. All right, now he's allowed to come in. And Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now, the king is thinking about Mordecai. Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor? More than myself. See, he's got <coughs> all the pride, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life that we saw. There's only two people on the mind of Haman right now. Him and Mordecai. Honor? That'd be me. The king wants to honor me. I'm so great. Hey. And Haman answered the king. <clears throat> now Haman's thinking of himself. That's what he's thinking. What do I want? Let's see. Okay, this is what I want, king. But he doesn't say this is what I want. But that person you want to honor, which I know it's me, this is what you do. For the man whom the king delighted to honor, me, let the royal pair be brought which the king uses to wear. Look at that. King, take your clothes, only your clothes, 
How many people were allowed to wear the king's clothes? No one. Does that include the underwear? They wore underwear? So, Haman's thinking of himself, right? What does Satan want? He wants the royalness of everything that God has. Including your clothes, God. I know God don't wear clothes, but including your underwear, God. I don't want just your throne. I want your clothes. Now, don't you just see if God would have let this go on? Don't you just see Haman taking over the entire kingdom? Don't you see him marching through the city? Look at me. I'm the king now. Don't you think he would have the reset of the people? He was wearing the king's clothes. Isn't that what Lucifer tried to do in, in Isaiah chapter 14? What was the thing in Isaiah chapter 14 of Lucifer? He did not want God's position. He wanted to be God. In every right and every way, including dressing. And the horse. Okay, the horse. You know, you know that the horse, and in, in, I think it's Revelation chapter 5 or 6, I'm not sure. In, the, in, the Re in Revelation chapter 19, you know those two horses are alike? They are so much alike that people who don't know what their Bible says they are alike. They are the same person. Did you know that? Did you know that both Jesus and, and Satan are, are referenced as a lion? You know they both have a city. They both have followers. And he's got the horse. How come Satan doesn't come in in Revelation 5 or 6, whatever it is? How come he doesn't come on in on an ass or a cult, of, a cult of an ass like Jesus first did? That's too high. That's too... I'm going to come back on a horse because here's the second advent of Jesus Christ. Everyone's been preaching out. Da, 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 here I am. See me sitting in the throne? You know he's got the world bleed? That's Jesus Christ at the second advent. The horse that the king rideth on. Jesus Christ comes on a horse. Those, those horses in Revelation are alike, but the riders are not. That first horse has death, famine, and everything else, and hell behind him. The one that comes, by, comes behind Jesus Christ has us. You got to get these characters. You got to get. You want to learn about Satan? You want to learn about? You got to read some of these characters in the Bible. What did Absalom try to do to get the king? Hey, I'll sleep with the, with my father's women, the concubines. That'll make me ruler. And it almost looks like Haman does that later on in the book of Esther. <laughs> Say that now because I may forget then. The king rides on and the crown royal which is set upon his head. He's not the king, but he would look like the king, and he probably would take over the power of, of king. I would, I would believe. If it did, it wasn't on account of Mordecai. If this was a, a normal country where God was not intervening and all that, and it wasn't because of Jew, I think the story would have been Haman would have taken over the entire government right then and there. As it happens in South America and Central America. This shows you that the providence of God, it's about the Jew. And Satan is never going to get victory over God. Overthrow the government. And let this uh, peril. Well, not the king's ring. He yeah, had his ring. That's true. He had the ring. Hopefully, he gave it back. I don't think the king would just juggle that thing around. That's the thing there. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble pr princes. Which implies that, as far as it goes, Mordecai was a prince. But he's speaking about himself. Most noble prince. That guy is so biased, so so 
Bible seminary. <laughs> we know much better than God. For God in the Hebrew said. <laughs> Should I say transliterated? And that they may array the man, the man. What do they say about Jesus? Behold the man. And there's a place in the Bible that speaks about the devil. And they'll say, isn't that the man that made the nations to? The Antichrist is going to be 100% man. 100% devil. With all whom the king delighted to honor. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city. That's Jesus Christ. Come in on that horse. Joel chapter 2. And the army that follows him. And this is Satan coming in, like I said, Revelation 4 or 5, whichever it is. So he's going to come in the street of the city. Jerusalem. This, this city is uh, <clears throat> the Medes and the Persians, the old Babylon. And proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man who the king delighteth in the honor. Dun, dun, dun! It's Haman. Now God does have a sense of humor. God does not shut men up. God man, God lets man talk. God knows. God foresees. God knows it all. God already knew what name was going to say. And God said, I'll use that. I'll break your pride. America and pride made in the USA. Everything's made in everything but the USA today. The king said to Haman, Make haste. And he, now you can see him, Haman now. He's got a smile from ear to ear and going around the back of his head. His head cracked. Now it looks like a butt. He is so happy. He probably peed his pants and everything. <laughs> King's gonna. <laughs> He just see me, make my friend see me riding the king's horse. <laughs> Woo -wee! You know, he forgot about Mordecai. <laughs> so he thought. <clears throat> you know, he, he forgot all about Mordecai. He went there to talk to the king about killing Mordecai. Now, hey, check out the dudes. <laughs> all right. And take the apparel and the horse. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know he's just standing there. Yes. As thou hast said. And do even so to Mordecai the Jew. Now, look what God did there. Mordecai the Jew. The two enemies he hates. Mordecai and the Jews. Now, people did not know about America in Esther's time. But the American Indians in the United States, what would be in America, in America, the United States, heard a big thump that went around the world as this guy's jaw just hit the floor. Who's it? People down in Africa, who's big thunder in the sky? What was that? That was Naaman's jaw hitting the ground. He probably sat there with his mouth open and the king's looking at him like, what? What's your problem, buddy? Why are you green? <laughs> you can't be unhappy. Listen, Nehemiah says, I can't be sad in the presence of the king. Here is Naaman. He's got his mouth open, the jaws to the floor, and he's probably aggravated and angry, as I can say the expression because we're talking about the devil. He's probably angry as hell. I'll tell you why. Three things. Mordecai, that was his enemy. Jews, that was his enemy. Me, Haman, I deserve it. It won't be if you get this angry. Because someone got promoted over you. And it was your idea, by the way. It was all the, this was all Haman's idea and someone else got the credit. That's a Bible for fact. Get used to that. If it, oh, I did all the work and Susie got it. Hey, that's a Bible fact, Christian. Esther chapter 6. Get over it. Haman got over it a little bit. I mean, he didn't pitch a fit. He didn't go to the king and kick him in the butt and talk about him or anything like that. Notice he obeys. 
even though it was his idea. Okay. That sin is at the king's gate. Nah, come on, God. You... All right, Mordecai, he hates. He hates the Jews, and that's the one. That's where this all started, the king's gate, because he wouldn't bow down before him. God is breaking the pride of this guy. Next. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Everything. Then took Haman the apparel, the horse, and arraigned Mordecai, dressed Mordecai. Mordecai ain't got that button right. You know, he's getting closer and closer to the neck. Oh, I got to finish this job here. He's getting closer and closer to the neck. Oh, man. And can you picture all the servants in the background? They know Haman hates this guy. <laughs> wait till I go at the water cooler about Haman and this one. <laughs> Ooh, wait. Haman dressing his enemy over there. Those gallows over there. <laughs> Let's see him hanging with the king's clothes on. And Mordecai doesn't know anything is going on, by the way. Why wouldn't they know? Because they rejected God in the scriptures and they're not going to read the New Testament. The only place they're going to probably read the New Testament, the story is that the missionary went down and said, oh, Peter, and put a whole bunch of old New Testaments in the caves and all that. So when they do go run down there, He said, well, they got the Old Testament, they got Esther, and they didn't even know who Jesus was, really. And the ones that did know the Jesus, it says because of envy, Haman sold them out. All right, so he's dressing Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaimed before him, this shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth in honor. That's Haman speaking, by the way. <laughs> Marching by his house or something. His friends seen him that he was boasting about. They told him to build that gallows. <clears throat> and Mordecai came again to the king's gate. Mordecai, it didn't go to his head. He got undressed, got up, well, got off the horse, got undressed, put his clothes back on, went back to the gate. Didn't go home, didn't brag about nothing, didn't swell in his head. Mordecai, what, what, what was all that about? I remember back then those two guys that wanted to do something to the king. Yeah, well, the king wanted to show his favor for what I did for him. Wasn't it good? I don't want to talk about it. We've got a couple of visitors coming now. Let's deal with them as they come to the city. That's what it's about. But Haman hasted to his house mourning. He was angry. Now he's in mourning. I know another king that cried in the Bible because he didn't get what he wanted. It was a vineyard. And he wanted to change that vineyard to a bunch of herbs, which is not what a vineyard's for. And Honey Dovey came in and said, Honey, aren't you the ruler of the nation? You just sit there and eat your popsicle. I'll go take care of the nation. And Naboth was killed. <laughs> scripture was scripture. Having his head covered. Oh, look at that. He's in sackcloth and ashes for not being the king's number one guy no more. Having to portray Mordecai, his enemy, around. Morning. He, I told you, people were talking about it. And he knew it. Now, what's the one thing he, he could have done before we even finished the book that he couldn't got right? Stand in the presence of the king, wait for him to come in the courtroom, and say, Your Honor, or King Azahurus, this is Mordecai. Yeah, I know this Mordecai. I've had a grudge against him, all because of something stupid. He wouldn't bow down before me. 
I just like to say I'm sorry and get things right in this kingdom. Those laws I had you sign, that was because of him. I want to get things right. Mordecai, will you forgive me? That never happens. There's no turning or burning. I mean, there's no turning. And he's going to burn. You see, his pride's got to a point he can't say, I'm sorry. See, God led Haman to lead this guy, Mordecai, around to say, hey, what's he any better than you are? And Haman told Zerus, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men, and Zerus, his wife, unto him. Now these friends and his wife, the ones that said, Hey, why don't you build some gallows? All right? Build some gallows, kill the guy. They started this. If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, and he was, that was the enemy. He wanted all Jews killed. Mordecai, he wanted on those gallows. Before whom thou hast begun to fall. Pride goeth before destruction. Mordecai being on that horse was the beginning of the fall of Naaman. And you can see God speaking through here. God just prophesied through his wife. If you don't believe me, ask uh, Pilate. Pilate's wife came into him and said, Hey, honey, yeah, don't have anything to do with that man because I had dreams about him. I'm not supposed to listen to my wife. Pilate should have. Now, their wives like Eve and Jezebel and all that don't listen to him. Zealous' wife, through, through God, is giving this. God's giving an opportunity. Now, God is not going to give Satan an opportunity. I would, when I was first saved, the first book of the Bible I read was Revelation. Never do that. That becomes a spooky story. You know, there were times after I read the book of Revelation, I would pray for the devil to get saved. I honestly would talk to the devil, my early Christian life, say, Satan, don't you see this? I'd tell Satan, don't you know you're going to be a loser? Get, get saved. I was witnessing to Satan when I first got saved. I swear to God, in the Bible. But no matter how many times you pray for Satan on that, he will never get saved. Him or the angels that are following him. The angels can't and Satan can't be redeemed. But Haman, you can't press the type all the way. God is working through him. God wants him to repent. Even in the Old Testament. But through the words of Zealous, his wife. A lot better words than Job's wife had. Job's wife said, curse God and die. He says, you're about to fall. That's a warning. You know, like when, when, when the bridge is out, they put a sign, bridge out. You don't keep on going. You do? Then that's your own stupidity. We are signs and we are a warning like zealous on the street corner. When we tell you about hell. We tell you about heaven. We tell you about the scripture. You keep on going the way you're going, that, that's your fault, not mine. So Zeus, her his wife says, before whom thou hast begun to fall. I mean, there's a chance, begun. There's a chance to stop what you're doing. <clears throat> thou shalt not prevail against him. Now look at that. You're not going to win, dear. Now eat your ham hocks. No, I didn't say that, but. But shall surely fall before him. 
She gives him a chance to repent. She tells him, listen, you're not going to win against him. And, and, she, and the Holy Spirit speaking through her and the character of Haman is, you know what? There is no hope for you. And when you're dealing with people, and Henry going off in the Marines and by himself, and as we deal with the people on the street, you may say, why did I say that? You may, why did you say that to that person? That's the inspiration of the Holy Spirit I said that. Or Jealous, his wife said. She said, repent, get right. You're not going to, there's no hope for you. There are some people you're going to deal with. You're going to tell them, and then you know what? There's no hope. Except for the Holy Spirit and God working in their life. Some people, there is no hope. They will not change. And when you got somebody like Haman, and this is hate, this is safely to say with Haman, he's got the pride of life, he's got the lust of the flesh, he's got the lust of the eyes, he has pride. When you got somebody with those four characteristics, they will hardly get saved. And that's somebody of your family, and that's someone of, of your co-worker, your boss, or anybody you know and care about. I'll tell you what you should do about them. Pray and fast. It's the only thing. While they were yet talking with him, came the change chamberlain. <laughs> <I hate it. laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. Ooh -hoo, hee -hee, hey, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I like to put a little, you know, that's that's my version of the Bible. No. I mean, you know it's a talk of the town. Come on, let's let's get the Bible real, you know. For, let's bring the Bible up to up to snuff. Let's let's change the Bible, make things right. You know they're snickering. You know there's a joke around the around the kingdom. <laughs> you know who that Haman? You know who he tried around the horse today? No, I didn't hear about hey, Mordecai. Mordecai? You mean Haman marched Mordecai around? The, you, you, you see what he built at his house down there? Yeah, he took two school buses up on the crane, lunch, as big as much as two school buses. And he had to, <laughs> I can't go home and tell my wife about that one. You wonder how many people after that went to Haman's house, looked at those cows and say, oh, what's going to happen to those? Haman today marched Mordecai around the city today. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Those were supposed to be for him. That talk only angers. All right. Hasten to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. You better watch out. He was in mourning. You don't go before the king in mourning. Don't you see the, the Haman's life here? It's it's like going to the hospital getting your heart checked. Woohoo! Well, I am Mordecai. Woohoo! The Jews. Woohoo! Ride him on a horse. Woo king! The banquet! <laughs> One day he's going to get a flat line. Dead. And then when he gets to hell and Satan talks to him, they talk in hell. Luke 16. So, Haman, how many Jews did you bring down here? Not too many. I didn't get a chance. You loser. I gave you the opportunity to bring all those Jews down to hell. You didn't do your job. Oh, you hated the Jews? The Bible speaks of different different things of hell. Well, how you do? Come with me. I'll show you. I got a special room for you. Come here. Come on. Open up the door in hell. Haman, say hello to Adolf. Adolf, say hello to Haman. You two got a lot to talk about for eternity. Along with the Antichrist. Imagine Haman. Imagine Adolf Hitler. Imagine Judas in the same depths of hell. And there are more who hated Jews more. And with that one.